What brings you joy? Dang, that's a simple question. <laughs> I would say the the root of it is people. Seeing my loved ones find their own joy and finding their own sense of peace and seeing them thriving. Just seeing other people happy, I think, brings me joy. Um, whenever I see just smiles on other people's faces, my family, my friends. Having a good time with my friends with like no pressure. I, I dance, so I would say dancing with friends or, you know, creating things with friends. My friends here in Davis definitely bring me joy. I think something that never fails to bring me joy is my family. I don't think that's ever going to change. What brings me joy is community. Uh, coming into Davis, I was pretty much fiending for friends and community just because previously I came from a city predominantly white and I really wanted to see other Filipino people. I have these like really movie like cut like scenes in my head sometimes like when I'm with my friends like say we're at the beach or something and like there's music and there's good vibes and I'm with just with the people I love like everything pauses and like time for me and I just feel very happy and like thankful to like be where I am and with who I'm with. I like to be helpful to people. It comes from the fact that I really like superheroes and it's probably really lame to some people or whatever and whatnot but I just I like to see myself as really altruistic. I really like to help people just for the sake of being a good person and I like helping people. It makes me feel good. What does it mean to feel joy and happiness? Can you describe it? The very first thing I think of is warmth. Um, whether it be laughing with the people around me or like just being around some of my bestest friends who honestly witness everything with me. Whenever I'm with them, I feel so warm. I feel at home. I feel like I can say anything that is on my mind free of judgment, but at the same time, they're there to like, you know, get me through whatever I need to get through. I think to feel joy and happiness is to feel very light to forget that time is even existing, to be able to be present. Just feeling like nothing else is there in the moment. It's definitely something that you always want to come back to. Being free is definitely a big feeling that I feel. Whenever I feel joy, I tend to be pretty energetic, like over-exaggerate some of my like, like, just like hand gestures or like, I like to show it very physically. Could you tell us about a time that you felt complete joy? when I came into Davis and moved in with my best friend just because I wasn't able to be myself back at home with my parents and then finally being to go and have that freedom just being by myself and with a person that I knew and understood who I was I could be myself and then share that joy with each other with my best friend. I think the most recent time I, I felt like the happiest or like the most comfortable was yesterday. Um, uh, <laughs> so there's this girl I really like and so we just hung out yesterday and I don't know just the dynamic between us I never felt it with anyone else before and just a different type of joy and happiness that I never felt with anyone else before and it, it still gives me like bubbles inside I don't know what would you say takes away from your joy or your ability to feel it if I'm just feeling very overwhelmed when things start overwhelming me I just start losing like all sense of myself I guess the obvious answer is always just academically. The academics is like the, the biggest factor in my hindrance in finding happiness. There's just too much things going on. It's hard for me to focus on finding happiness. I think trying to fulfill these set of expectations and pressures that are pushed from say like my parents and these institutions that expect us to go follow these very strict boundaries or strict rigid things that really is impossible to fulfill. We're just existing in this capitalist society it came to me before I came to college, especially because I was going to go on a pre-med track. And when I was talking to my Kuya before applying to college, he introduced me to a lot of the social sciences and humanity fields and universities. And when he showed me GSW, I was like, okay, that's literally what I want to do. But I had a sense of fear to open up to that, to my parents especially, because they came from a medical field background. You know, there is like a toxic judgmental mentality in Filipino culture that we're not too prideful to talk about But honestly, that's one of the things that takes away my joy again and again Like, like even though it's like in Filipino culture, we like kind of joke about it and like laugh it off I don't think people realize what kind of harm that they bring when they bring out judgmental comments And I feel like for me personally, that's where a lot of my joy disappears Creators 
we're very judgmental of ourselves and with me i struggle with a lot of anxiety and just self-doubt and i feel like that's very common in, in a lot of artists but i think there's a lot of things in i guess like for me specifically like the dance industry where there's a lot of expectations or just types of art that aren't as acclaimed as others and i wish that we could express more freely and everything would get the same attention as others but obviously that isn't the case there's things that will get more views than others and there's things that we have to settle for in order to make a living which it's a hard dilemma to to be in and navigating that with Davis, it was a lot of like, can I make dance a career? And can I make it something that isn't just a hobby? I, I want to, you know, dive into it as deep as possible. But then there's this other side. It's like, will I get there? Am I good enough? And will my family approve of it? There's just a lot of different components. And I think because of that, I've had so much like self-doubt and that sort of brings down joy a little bit. But I feel like I've been good at keeping my hopes up with that. How has Filipino culture and Filipino values influenced your view on joy? I think it's just the aspect that Filipinos are very family oriented and like no matter what situation you're in, family will always be there and they'll always find a way to help you in any sort of way. I think everybody can relate to Filipino, just the idea of making your parents proud up to an unhealthy degree. And I'd like to think I was that because I was fortunate enough to, to be in a spot where my parents never really pushed me towards anything like outwardly as in like the traditional stereotype of being a nurse or being a doctor or an engineer I was never pushed towards that way outwardly um, it was kind of more like a subtle thing I would say I was never really put in that really like awkward position where I, I didn't want to do something but my parents forced me to do it I'm thankful for that but in contrast I felt like if I didn't do the things that they would like ease into me or like like slightly push to me i would be a disappointment and i think disappointment is a really 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 big thing for me um, that i had to unlearn i think filipino cultures and values have played a major part in what is joy for me i mean growing up one of them i would say one of the earliest memories of joys for me were manny pacquiao fights because the whole family pulled through the whole living room was there in one place we were all together everyone was screaming all the titas were screaming you know all the uncles are super drunk it's just very joyous to be in the same place with people and i feel like that has translated into where i see joy so i see joy in being surrounded by people and being surrounded by loud rambunctious energy like the way that filipinos are right and so that has honestly shaped a lot of what joy has meant for me. And then I would say another big thing is food. My dad was like a really big advocate for just eating together and just cooking in general. And I feel like because of that, I really take that as quality time and just eating together it really makes me feel like happy, especially when it's in a, not a big friend group, but like just people who I genuinely enjoy being around. Can you tell us about someone specific that brings you joy? Uh, hmm. <laughs> hmm. Man, there's just a lot of people though. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say my queer Devin. Devin is just an incredible human being who has so much compassion and so much talent. And coincidentally, we're just the same person. Like carbon copies, like down to like the artists that we listened to growing up and really, really small things. And I've, n I've never met someone that I connected with so deeply and so specifically about just random crap. I value his mentorship and like how we're able to connect as like an Aquia and Odding. But at the same time, like just as a friend and as a person, he's just amazing. I'd say my Kuya, for sure. My Kuya is six years older than me. We never really got along until he went away for college. Honestly, he was the one who helped me find my passions because he also was trying to go through pre-med and when he told our parents that that was definitely not what he wanted to do, that was a lot for him. And then just seeing him do that, be like a catalyst in our family, basically breaking down these barriers, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do the same thing and every time we talk there's just like a feeling that i never get with anyone else just being able to talk freely about our own feelings and be vulnerable because we are really going through the same experiences he's pretty much the person who i go for advice for i think someone that has never failed to bring me joy has been my mom I don't want to say this, but I'm definitely a mama's boy. Like even though I'm up here in Davis, my mom, she calls me every day. 
the first person that comes to mind is my partner, um, Gianna. I feel like both of us are more emotionally vulnerable with each other because I struggled with being emotionally vulnerable a lot. We were long distance for about a year or two because of college. Now being able to be physically with them here has done me wonders mentally also. Just being with them or talking with them, it just makes the weight of the world disappear for me. And I feel like I could just like be in the moment with them every single time and nothing else would matter. Someone who brings me joy is Sana from TWICE. She's my bias, but real talk, someone who brings me joy is my sister. She basically took me in on her own. When my other sisters would pick on me, she would always defend me. When I didn't have a lot of friends, she would always invite me to hang out with her friends and I really appreciate that. She would also like allow me to sleep over at her place whenever I didn't feel like being home when she was away in college. Ooh, the first person that came to mind is my grandma. She recently moved back to the Philippines a couple months ago, so I miss her very deeply. I think about her very often. I just think about all the times that she was able to take care of me when um, my parents weren't able to, um, all the times where she was just like straight up like very real, very honest, um, giving me that tough love that I needed to hear. But although she has this very strong presence, she's also very tender and very caring, very soft and warm. So I really admire that duality. I miss the conversations about her like telling stories from when she lived in the Philippines and like connecting over produce that isn't able to grow here in the US but that she deeply misses in the Philippines. She reminds me to just be loving, be caring, yes, but also know your worth and know when things aren't meant for you anymore. The first person that came to my mind was my grandma. She immigrated here early 90s by herself. Just the hard work and the dedication that she put into bringing my family here. She just turned 90, actually. She's definitely like the biggest inspiration in my life and why I'm choosing the career path that I am in. She's diabetic and my end goal in life is to be an endocrinologist assistant, which is a doctor that helps diabetic patients. This is my first ever tattoo. It's a pan, it's like a frying pan. She would always cook on that pan. I love her cooking. It's just hard being away from her. It definitely takes away joy, but whenever I see her, it definitely rejuvenates me. Someone who has continuously brought joy into my life from literally day one has been my dad. And it took me growing up to really realize everything he does for me, but I realized that he always puts me and my brothers at the forefront, no matter what it is. It's always me and my brothers that are number one. So whether that means even if he's coming home from work and he's super tired, but he still makes the effort to ask us, hey, do you want to take Dave, our dog, to the dog park like after school? I, when I was younger, I didn't really think much of it, but like now that I'm older, I'm like, wow, he like no matter how tired he was, he still prioritized spending time with us and that's how he expressed his love for us and I feel like I got my love languages from him which is quality time. He brings me joy because of his unconditional love and I've really seen that after living away in college for so long that whenever I come back home it's always love no matter what. Do you think he'd answer if you called him and called him some of that? Do I just like call her right now? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I yeah. mean, but I don't know. Is she in a concert right now? <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Hi! Um, <laughs> he's somewhere right now. I just wanted to say that I love and appreciate you and you're, you're my favorite ever. But don't tell anyone. <laughs> no, it's from, it's, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe it is. I'm gonna say hi. We love you so much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have fun at the concert. I love spending time with you. I'm so glad we met too. Okay. I'll leave you to him. Okay, bye. I love you. Okay, love you too. Bye. I've, I've always been really bad with words, and I think that's why like I tend to just express that all through dance. But this experience has helped me like put into words the amount of gratitude that I have for being in this community and like in all of the communities that I belong to. So thank you guys so much, I really appreciate it. For real, no one's just gonna answer the phone? <laughs> oh. okay. Hey mom. Hmm? I just wanted to say that I love you. I just wanted to say that I love you. Oh, I love you too. 
Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, Mom. Love you. <laughs> Love you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. I got into an accident. Again? No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm... Honey, don't do that. <sighs> No, I, I, I wanted to call you because um, I just wanted to say that you mean the universe to me and that I love you more than anything and you always make me feel like the weight of the world is gone when we're together. What? Yeah, that's it. Love you. Love you. I'll see you later. Bye. Hello? Hello? I just wanted to tell you thank you. By just like being my older sister and always sticking around me even though like when I was little, I was a little bit of a brat. Especially like when you moved away in college, you always gave like your base in Berkeley. Like for me, every time I didn't want to be home and I'm, I'm really just thinking about that. I'm like, wow, she's amazing. So thank you. I'm doing it with someone who brought me joy. A girl? Yes! <laughs> okay. Grandma, if you're watching this, thank you for everything that you have given me and that you've given my sisters, especially these past two years. And thank you for teaching me how to be a self-sustainable woman and to always love strongly and love very radically, but to also be very firm in what I believe in and to be very firm in the decisions that I make for myself for all the meals that you've cooked for me, for all of the hot chocolate. I hope to have hot chocolate with you again soon. Hello? Ah, Lola. How are you? How are you? I'm in my house. I'm in my house. Are you in my house? Mm. I just wanted to call just to say, um, uh, I miss you. I, 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 I miss you too. <laughs> um, thank you for everything. Mahal na mahal kita. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> Maybe I can see you Sunday. I'm going back home Sunday. Maybe. You'll get to meet Haley. I love you. <laughs> love you too, Lola. Miss you too. I'll see you. Bye. Y'all really did that, bro. Y'all really did that. Hey, Dad. Oh, okay. Are you busy? Yeah, I'm at home. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye. <laughs> he's at a concert. All right, so my dad didn't answer because he's at a concert, so I'm gonna leave him a voice memo. Hey, dad. Okay, you'll probably hear this afterwards, but I just wanted to thank you for everything you've done for me growing up. I know I tell you this all the time in your birthday messages, but I honestly think about it a lot, how much you do for me, Kyler and Jakey, and you know, as I grow older, I realize how much love you really put into us and it's something I can never ever repay you for. And yeah, I'm always grateful, especially I always think about that one time when you were talking about Grandpa Joe, your dad, and then you would say how he wasn't really the best dad at times. And like, when you want to be a dad, you know, you wanted to change that and make sure that you were like the best dad. Here we go, here we go. Um, but yeah. Anyway, I think you um, I think you achieved that goal, and 
I think you achieved that goal of being the good dad that you never had. And I love you a lot. I know you're at a concert at Cash Creek. Have fun. But yeah, just wanted to say thank you. Love you, Dad. I think to the time my grandpa passed away, which is my dad's dad. And I didn't know him that well, but when we went home for his funeral, each and every one of his kids came up there to give their eulogy. And a lot of them were very like, oh, I know I didn't know you that well. Or like, you were never home that much. And like, oh, even though you weren't the best dad. And like, that really like put into perspective how much my dad does for me and my brothers. He kind of like made a personal vow to himself that when he had kids, that he would make sure that would never happen. And I see that every day. It could be something as small as like taking us to the park. Like, he's definitely been like, a really good dad and I realized like you know not a lot of people have that I just feel very grateful to have someone like my dad who wanted to be a great dad and he is so sorry I'm like ugly crying right now but about the greatest video of PCN history <laughs>